welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate, episode 64. Yes. Let's talk about cards that we want to see possibly go up, possibly not go up, come down. Let's let's kind of start there. And and I and I have B wings up, but we don't really have to talk about B wings. That's not um that's not the intent. Is I just wanted to test it. I forgot to clear my cache. Um. So Nick, we, we we've seen a lot of Vader, and and I'm gonna pick on Vader to begin with because I think Vader is a a good starting point. A lot of people talk about, you know, like what what is Defender Vader came down to nine points. Why does that have to happen, right? And everybody wants to see Vader Defender that I know go up. Mm-hmm. At least that's what it feels like. Um. So what what are your thoughts? I guess let's let's start with the Vaders. Um. Because those two were specifically hit um, to come down in points in the last update. Yep. So what are your thoughts? The most interesting thing about um, Empire in general is how they kind of have become the the rebels of 2.5, you know, original release. And that has a lot of, ends, a lot of two point cheap, efficient ships that you can choose from. Uh, and you know, the, on the high end, the aces like Vader, either X one or defender Vader. Um, I honestly think Vader at nine points, I go back and forth on this. I'm kind of a fence sitter. I, I, I kind of still hate the fact that he's in the game. Um, however, I think he's made a lot stronger by just his loadout and the slots that he's given. So I think one, if, if we were to be pro keeping him at nine points, which I'm not saying that I am, but if we were to be on that, in that camp. Uh, it, he would have to lose the talent slot. <laughs> Can't don't give him juke. Um, and his loadout points would have to drop so that all he could really take would be like malice and maybe one other grade. Um, and even then, he's still incredibly powerful. So, I, I going up to ten, I think it would be more realistic, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went back up one more point, back up to ten. That's, that's my take on him. So, so quick question then, and 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 I think I think because when he was eleven, we was we were not seeing him ran very much, right? Yeah. Um, and going up to ten and keeping the same loadout could be a good fair change. You, if they don't touch Tie Fighters, you could still fit five Tie Fighters with him. You just lose the one Tie Fighter that you could have, or you lose uh, the Iden Tie Fighter, which is what I always just like to say. You just lose Iden. Um. Yeah. Even though, in fairness, Iden is powerful, but Iden only works if you're by her, and Vader Defender is never by her. So to me, it, it's kind of that's not like to me that's not the big um, thing here. Now is I don't think Iden works with Vader, right? Isn't Iden just tie? Oh, that's right. LNs? It's just I, you're right. It is it's tie fight. Yep, you're right. Huh. Yeah, but still, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think in a world where Vader's becomes ten points, the Jingoists and Wampa will be three. So, I, or at least one of those two, um, maybe even restricted to just one Jingoist. But we might start to see the restricted list be utilized here soon if they try to tinker with that because nothing is on there right now. No. Yeah, and and see that that's where I wanted to. That's where I think this this conversation can go. Right. So we have two Vaders, and I brought Iden up. Right. Mm-hmm. Vader Defender, though, in my opinion, because Vader Defender has not actually won anything, I do not feel actually Vader Defender is a problem. I will say giving him the talent slot to allow him to take Juke is a field is a negative play experience. Personally, um, it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, and and I don't mind ty- or defenders having Juke to some extent. Like I had to fight it again when I played Bulby Eamon. Um, to me, it was not the end of the world. It's just the Vader makes it feel even worse because he's able to convert blanks to crits and hits and yeah. all these fancy things. And then he could tell you, well, you're going to get one less other dice. If people really want to get fancy, they could put out maneuver um, on him because he has enough squad load points, I believe, to put out maneuver. Nobody's done okay. that, but. You could. Uh, it's hard to. It, he's always trading shots, right? At least with one other ship. I, I don't. I, getting behind, like, allow your opponent allowing you to get behind them with Vader Defender is rare. It's not supposed to happen. Like, maybe for a turn, but yeah, you're usually you know facing off, or he's just running away and coming back in. So um, I think the safe play is to just take that, like you said, take the talent slot away. I, I think we could go and I mean, even though we're going one by one here, we could make the argument for just maybe removing the talent slot from all force users. I mean, for most, I would hope. 
as someone who plays Luke all the time. I, I find it kind of frustrating for my opponents when I get those six dice proton torpedoes. You know, it's it's uh, it's crazy. It's, yeah. It's a lot. And that was one of the additions that they made. And, and hence, I don't know if they're going to want to roll that back for every one of them personally. Um, and, and again, we got to think in AMG's world, would they want to do that? I don't know. Yeah. You know. Well, then, yeah. And then we talk about price adjustments where uh, trick shot goes up a point and um, if they keep it right, you go trick shot at five, maybe shattering shot goes up to four. Um, make people have to, to pick one or the other and yeah. start to use different upgrades because there's so many upgrades on certain pilots that will never get used because there's just an obvious choice right now. Well, I think, and this is where we talk about the restricted list, right? And so you bring up the trick shot, shattering shot, a combo that I, I I would wager that was missed by every one of the playtesters. And if you're a playtester and you want to come on the show and talk about this, I'm happy to have you on, but nobody wants to ever volunteer. Are they allowed to talk about it? Because I signed an NDA when I playtested. You do, but supposedly once they release that set, you could talk about it. Sure, okay. So it's technically, not very clear. Yeah, well, I mean, technically afterwards, you could come on and, and have that conversation. Yeah. But to me, it was something that was obviously, uh, to some extent, missed or or they found it and AMG didn't care. One of the yeah. two. We don't know which. <laughs> I'd like to address like what you said and also what Navi said about not winning a major event. I don't really like looking at it like that. I think if you see it make top eight, top four, final table, I think that's enough to make to kind of analyze. Um, it, it, there's factors that can cause you know a list like that to lose outside of it just being, you know, outside of it just being Vader defender not being good enough or whatever you know like there's like if you watch the Gen Con final game it was it was basically down to a scenario point so so the question then becomes though is so and that's fine and and Nick I don't disagree to some extent I don't disagree with you on that except for is it all the Vader in the list or is it because you get five ties and one of the ties can say screw you the other two ties can say have a strain every time you know like we, if we, I don't think that anything that hits top cut is beyond um, a conversation piece. Because it, it, to be honest, Vader Defender has easily made top cut in pretty much all of the tournaments since they dropped to nine points. At least one of those lists. And it's worth talking about that fact alone. You know, it's worth mentioning, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's tough. I mean, there's just. It's always fascinating having this conversation about Vader. Um, I, I will say, like, on the other side, I think X1 Vader has always been one of the best um, designs and more balanced uh, force, high, high initiative force users in the game, despite the ability being so strong, because he uh, can't evade. He can he can just take damage. and um, Seven he points is now. still pricey. Um, uh, Vader, what, like to Gambit or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, are we seeing that a lot? Is that a combination on X One Vader's? That, that was yeah, Gen Con. That was Gen Con staple, baby. Oh, really? That's interesting. I didn't run run into that personally, but I also you have to fly him very specifically, I guess, to take advantage of that. So, um, yeah. but on average, you know, Vader to, Vader X One is not taking that kind of defensive or double token stacking abilities like Vader Defender is. Um, always preferred the x1 vader anyways so i like him at seven i think eight he doesn't get played anymore it's kind of tricky so yeah i'd agree so all right so i think we're in the same camp of removing the talent slot at minimum from vader defender like i think that i think you're right that at minimum that needs to, to happen and i agree i think you can lower some of that loadout points you know maybe yeah. give them maybe give them nine loadout points the way i the, nine. the way i see it is a ship that already has basically basically a guaranteed three hits doesn't need the help it just ships like that pilots like that really um they don't need the help <laughs> just don't. and i think it, it would be interesting too yeah and nick it, it, what if they started creating kind of like what they did with the delta 7b's and 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 the clt deltas right where you have different loadout costs what if you said hey vader defender with zero loadout costs is nine points you get no loadout costs, or give them three maybe give them like a very small amount how about nothing? Let's just give them nothing. There yeah. you go. Let's just say no, nine points, you anything. get nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, you and... still could you could still win an event with, without I mean, he's got everything on his card. The pilot card gives him access to so many tools that a lot of other pilots wish they had. So yeah. Uh no no loadout points at nine would be interesting. I would be willing to see how a couple months of that goes, but it's not a bad idea. Yep. 
And I agree with you. I don't think Va- I don't think Vader uh, X one really needs much. I, I will say it is um, the pattern analyzer is very uh, weird. Um, having a, a Vader Chained, that can right? do that, yeah, because yeah. it just chains everything. He just still. chains everything still. Yeah, yeah. I I'm still a proponent of maybe dropping the talent, and, and maybe it goes back to the argument. Maybe all Force users just shouldn't have talent. It's weird though. I'll be honest with you. It's weird, and this is the problem with this game. I think. But it's weird that you have a force user that's not got a talent slot because the majority of the, your force users are four through six initiative, right? So, and most four through six initiative get one talent slot, majority of them. Yeah. So it's it's a hard it's a hard I think that's a harder sell for me to get rid of all of them. I think maybe we you nuke it on specific ships, especially since that's AMG's thing now, right? Let's give yeah. uniqueness. Yeah, I don't think Ahsoka Tano, you know, not taking elusive away from her, whatever talent she wants to take is really like, I don't think that's yeah. warranted. But yeah, they already took Chopper away from her. So like, like, and that wasn't even needed. At that point, yeah. I would say, well, I'll have about A Wing Ahsoka, I guess, in my oh, head. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, 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 exactly. Either Ahsoka. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about TIE Fighters. I, I guess, I, do we just go faction by faction? Is that what we do? Maybe that's what we do. Quickly go over yeah, the factions. The, All right. Yeah. So Iden's, uh, to, to me, Iden's an easy uh, four. I, I think Iden goes up to four, give her some more loadout points, and move on. Like so I, she goes up to the same price as Hellrunner, right? Because Hellrunner's yes. four right now. Yep. And okay. I think Hellrunner should stay at four, just personally. I If we start seeing Hellrunner come down too far, we will we will all be eating a million Thai fighters like all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if especially if do something later, the and leave the ties cheap. We'll see Thai swarms with with Howl Runner. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I ran into a Rex or Brat Thai swarm Howl Runner. Like it was interesting. <laughs> She's good. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I also think like they give giving her access to like tractor beam or hlc um was a choice i i witnessed on our stream the other night how strong Iden with tractor beam is and it scares me a little bit um the premise of her being able to tractor anybody in a turn and then the ties just feasting on one ship and killing it immediately um do i think she should lose that uh, not necessarily but i'm also not sure that she should be four points i mean they clearly made her three that because they wanted her to get played um at, at four let's just assume that if she goes up the jingoists go up a point wampa goes up a point right like a lot of these ties will get adjusted because there's just too many two point options and um i don't know i would rather keep her at three and then maybe make her a little more dull just <laughs> let, let her be the ability only yeah or just give her you know enough to you know take a talent she could take you know three points or four points she could take a targeting computer and elusive or something like that yeah, so just take the t- just t- you could take the cannon and the missile slots yeah, away. Yeah, because I know that a lot of people are like, oh, cannons aren't that good, but guys, tractor beam, one's good, it can be really, really good. So some things just get screwed by tractor beam. If you shoot a tractor beam into a T sixty five, T seventy, you know, there's a high chance you get a tractored. So yeah, I would agree with you. So now we have an ISB. Oops, we have an ISB jingoist. I think that's kind of the next easy. Uh, Kel, I don't think those are worth two points. I know why they wanted them, but an I four at two points, is yeah, pretty... it strains people and like yeah. depletes them or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like even without, how about this? Even without, like dealing with the the, the points, like even if you give gave them no loadout points, a two point four I four is crazy to me. Like for what its ability does. So yeah. I don't like using the word unfair very often, but I honestly think it's pretty just just pretty unfair. <laughs> Yeah, so I I feel those uh, those specifically need to go up. To yeah, be honest they, with you. yeah, make them three. Absolutely, I would pay three points for those things. I just have to, you know, the, the the end of the day, the goal for Empire players for me is to have to think about what kind of list they're building because I feel like it's brain they're brain dead decisions that are being made right now. There's like three different archetypes of a list that you just it's like that is English just swamp. Okay, do I go X one Vader? Do I go you know Defender? Then that informs if you take a Reaper. It informs if you take um you know another x1 or an interceptor like it's just it's it's pretty simple so make people think about it a little bit because contrary to you know amg might think that list building should be guided i think people should have to learn a little bit about the the nuances of putting together a solid list oh yeah yeah all right so 
now that we're so li- now, that, now that we've talked about things, is there anything else you feel in Empire that really needs a big points adjustment? Um, I've gotten some experience uh, recently, just kind of casually. I was playing uh, X1 Vader, Merrick, uh, Jingo, Wampa, and Faroff in a four point, um, four point Reaper. Felt a little bizarre to me because it did a lot of work and support in that list. And then if it died, it didn't mean much. Um, so I think they should take a look at the Reapers and. I would consider maybe bumping up, like keeping Vizier at four, bumping Faroff up to five and giving more loadout points. Um, that That's probably the only other thing. Um, it just, it's, the Reapers are, have gotten a lot better with the errata to them as well. So. Yeah. And maybe, maybe, system. maybe taking, yeah. If they don't want to bump them up with points, taking loadout away to the point where they can't take a force user at all. Yeah. No Cause I just user. put seven sister on, on fair off. And then anytime anybody gets close, I just tractor them and I can coordinate through my action step. And yeah, it's, it's really, really good for four points. Like yeesh. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I know. Trust me. That yeah. was my, that Your was seven my sister second, love. Yeah. second loss at Gen Con was somebody, I didn't know that I'd never seen seven sister. I just thought it was a force point. My bad for not, you know, reading the damn card but here comes kanan oh just gonna take a rotate focus uh for stress and oh by the way oh he remembers the trigger and we're gonna tractor kanan so kanan now gets one green dice and mm-hmm. then i'm gonna give three ties to eat kanan alive and i literally yeah. lost a full health kanan two three ties because of tractor yeah, it's, yeah tractor is still so feels bad i mean i'm glad they took away the option to throw people on rocks because it alone is still still so strong and that permanent negative one agility is yeah. spicy <laughs> feels really bad and it feels so bad when it happens to you it's, it's rough so now let's talk a little bit for um empire i guess i i don't know maybe we just maybe i i like the idea of sticking with the one you know faction i guess it, it feels easier to me um sure so let's talk a little bit about like ships that we feel either got over nerfed or feel that we could increase something or change something on them to make them feel better to be taken over other ships. And and this is a prime example of when I say, Hey, if I didn't kept the same loadout and goes up to four points, are you going to choose Iden over an inquisitor? That's an I three with five loadout points. Probably not. I'm not going to because I didn't negate a death. I didn't is a get out of jail free card oh, yeah. for, for ties. Um, it's very much a counter to alpha strike lists as well. Yes. And I don't feel I want to see that go away, but at the same token, the, when I see something like an inquisitor here and I go inquisitors have four health, you can't take a hull upgrade anymore. So even if you gave them eight loadout points, are you really going to put a shield upgrade on them if you can do other things? Probably not. I mean, I guess with the only slots being force and sensor, <laughs> like, like you ain't doing much. So if you gave me eight points, I sure as hell I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to put a, uh, you know, shield upgrade. But to me, I think these inquisitors, if you gave them more, a little bit more loadout and a few other options, maybe not a missile slot maybe we want to stay away from missile slots i would actually um think i i actually feel these would be something we would sink in them again especially at four points they're a tankier tie fighter yeah that's are they gonna do damage though right is the question yes (laughs) well you're right yeah because that's the it's just a damage race it's where we've gotten um so the tie fighters obviously are two dice guns but it's just your your the statistical probability of you dealing damage goes up so much the more of them you have right um accompanied by a guaranteed damage dealer like vader um yeah the inquisitors i haven't really thought about them i want to take a look at the grand inquisitor um because again like i think they're gonna want to the grand inquisitor is six he should totally not be six honestly i feel like he could maybe be five um but if they do that they have to be very careful about what else the nerf to make him not be an easy slot in um i feel the same way about interceptors for having this you know if we're going to look at the inquisitors this way mm-hmm. uh soon to your fell is just kind of not really strong in the newer version of the game i don't know if he, that warrants him going to five points because of his ability in i6 and double reposition is just kind of you know 
But hey, if Obi Wan Kenobi can be five points, then why the hell can't Sinter Fell be five points? I don't, I don't know if that's too far off. Right? Yeah, and in fairness, have force. he doesn't have a force three yeah. force to back him up. So and an, an ability that keeps focus tokens around and yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would agree. I would like to see Soon Tier come down. I think if you drop Soon Tier a point down, mm -hmm. he's he becomes almost an auto include. I actually, I'll be honest, I would take Soon Tier over um any of those uh reapers any day of the week personally and, and it's a play oh, yeah. style thing i think because soon tier and grievous are somewhat similar in their ac effects and i like soon tier and i've always kind of flown soon tier not to very good effect, me too but me too yeah um, <laughs> hey teach, it, it's a if you learn how to fly soon tier well then you've learned a lot about flying an x-wing and how to be a good pilot you know it's a, it's a great challenge i want to see that come back a little bit um even like talking to duncan duncan's like i'm not playing empire because i hate their faction identity right now and if those of you guys that know duncan you know that he loves to play so he's a soon tier fell guy that's his that's his ship that's his pilot so you know the, the, the him saying that really kind of resonated with me it's like yeah that's kind of the way i see it too the empire has gotten more of it felt like more like separatist with these like mini swarms mm -hmm. than what i'm used to so all right, so another so let's talk about gauntlets oh, a little bit of Empire. Gar is eight <laughs> and has eighteen loadout and is an I three. Pre Vizsla in Separatist has eighteen loadout and is seven points. Yeah, I think uh, Gar. I see Gar coming down. Personally. Yeah, is he is like is okay? Do you think the gauntlet is like good enough? Because even though we saw somebody make top cut at Gen Con with it, which Bravo, I don't remember their name, but Bravo, because for real, it's a it's an exciting, cool looking ship. But I I don't know why. It just seems like everybody just sleeps on it or just doesn't care enough to play it. Why? Is it so, bad? It's I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it's kind of bad. But and I think some of us aren't used to flying large bases as well, right? So like if you think about 2.0 and like thing like unless you played extended, you didn't fly a million large base ships unless you were like a scum player, right? Most people were not flying large base ships. I I don't think the gauntlet's bad, personally. I think not having dual actions sometimes is kind of bad. And I think they're such an easy target to burn down, it's not even funny, right? And and so I'll pick on JJ a little bit because he's not here. We, he's he, we've been flying a pre Vizsla, um, four droids and Grievous list. That's just kind of been I I'm I'm a separatist guy, right? And so like for me the 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 droid the, the droids and pre Vizsla just kind of feels thematic, right? Um, I'm gonna be I get to get four droids on the table, which is nice. And I get a big gauntlet ship, which is news to, you know, like <laughs> that's better than a Sith infiltrator. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> like, um, so I, th the gauntlets to some extent are pretty bad though. Like, cause you can't take the target lock and a focus. You just can't do it. Like, and then you have to add all these upgrades to do these to things. Be. Cause you can't take a target lock and a focus. It's like, man, this shouldn't be able to, a lot of ships shouldn't be able to take a target lock and a focus at the same time. <laughs> No, you're right, but these ones, it's really bad because if you take the target lock, you die. Like, you're gone. Even with yeah. the two green dice, unless you're... It's a you're, dilemma. <laughs> yeah. It's really, this one is, I think these ones get burned down so fast, though. And maybe it's the... the it's the, the shield-to-hull ratio. Yeah. If it had three if it had three shields and, like, eight hull, it would be, it would, people, it would be a different conversation, right? Like, another reason why um the, the uh, what's it called, the Lancer class shuttle or patrol craft whatever mm -hmm. we call it katsu ship two shields and eight hull i mean it's just a crit sponge it, it's the shields go down in one shot maybe you even took a damage card and like we're off to the races how many see how many crits can this thing take <laughs> um you know before the damage deck is exhausted i i think that it's just a really juicy target in a meta that is proton torpedo heavy heavy laser cannon heavy um trick shot chattering shot heavy just all these ways to sink in more damage malice heavy like it the gauntlet i think is more so a victim of the times and the and of the current like game than it is like that's it's just still the dial is pretty decent the ability to kind of stop and rotate or stop and it's it's not 
I, I wouldn't say it's like bad, but I just think it's just not good enough. It's just like the A-Wings. They're not good enough. They don't deal enough damage. They can die too easily for their cost. And Yep. Yeah, especially with a, an eight-point investment. Like, there are very few ships I'm willing to spend eight-plus points on, and I definitely wouldn't spend it on a gauntlet. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I'm kind of in the same boat. I, in, in Republic, you could take... C3O, right? And so you get your, your your once you calculate, you get your re-rolls, but you're yeah. locked into calculating for your action. <laughs> um and again, I think, you know, like with this one, the the reinforce being red also is just such a feels bad for this ship, right? I think if you make the reinforce white, redistribute some of the shields, this mm -hmm. ship sees play. Even because everybody was worried because two agility, oh my god, the big ship with two agility. Well, I will tell you, in three turns, you can burn a gauntlet down. No questions yeah. asked. Just and you'll win the it's game gone. if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I three, too. So let's, I mean, another thing, same issue I have with Kanan was that the in the initiatives are four, five, sixes, and all, almost only four, fives, and sixes um, right now. And so you just get initiative killed, too. It just super feels bad when you spend that many points on a pilot. Um, but, you know, you could get Han for eight points in a different faction, I know, obviously. But, you know, or Gar Saxon at I3, if you just get his initiative killed, you feel like you didn't get that value. Um, what about Captain Hark, man? What does he even do? <laughs> As you Captain. reveal a stop maneuver, if you are equipped with Swivel Wing down, you must execute a side slip, one speed bank side slip maneuver of the same difficulty instead. Yeah, I don't know I, I could. It's worthless. I'll, I'll tell I mean, you, yeah, I tried it. in the weeds. It's going to be hard to be able to execute those. It was fun. How about this? It was fun for the one game I played with it because it was, it turned into like kind of a mini HP, like once a, a game. mini large, yeah, very yeah. large mini HMP. <laughs> yep. But I'll tell you what, the second time I did it and hit a rock with it, I got super pissed and just like that. And that was the end of that. You know, that was the end of that ship. Oh, there's two damage. Oh, now I'm at half points and two shots. Boom, it's dead. And there goes yeah. seven points. Yeah, not be mentioning salvage mission. These yeah, the, these things needing to pick up salvage is, is rough. <laughs> yeah, because they just can't keep anything like especially because everybody can shoot him. Right. Everybody can hit them. They're so easy to hit. And bull, yeah. and you fuck, you get a bullseye on these things like nobody's business. Yeah, you know? it's, it's it's so easy to do. Yeah, Poe would have a field day with with uh, Captain Hark, yeah. or Gar Saxon, either of them. And I just go back to if we look at Bosk, Bosk is a great you know seven point, you know one agility party bus type thing. You can run Bosk and it and it feels okay. I think Gauntlets. I think to me, and this is this is and this is just me. And I would like to see it figured out how they could pip it so you can never take more than two gauntlets in a list. Um, but I think they should come down in points by one point each. And then oh, you, yeah. you just can no longer have more than two. You just, there's, there's, there should just be, there is never an ability to take three gauntlets so, in a so, list. So, okay. So you're saying your proposal is to make Gar Sax and Captain Hart. We're talking about Empire still, right? Not just yeah. all the gauntlets. Yeah. Uh, but making them six points. Um, I would make Gar seven, seven and Gar. Hark six. Yeah. Oh, six point gauntlet, man. That's pretty good. That's what I, I mean, would say. <laughs> wow. I, 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 then when you lose it at I three, you're not feeling as bad though. And I know, I know our, our I know our game suffers because uh, because of the the points, um, the inability to have quarter and half points, right? I, I understand that. Like, but we're stuck here, right? So we're kind of stuck in that meta, and I could we could spend an hour harping on that. And like to me, it would be smarter to move to 100 points again at least, and allow us to go back to a, a normal life. But that's not going to be reality. We're never going to see that change. Um, AMG's never going to admit that piece of it. So we ha we have what we have, I guess. Yeah. the the thing The thing that helps a ship like the Gauntlet is if your opponent opts to not go all in on it early, it's kind of worthless shooting at it in the end game because it's just unless it's chance. Just you're not going to get anything out of shooting at it, you know, unless you're maybe you're knocking off a salvage like that could be it. But ideally, you have other ships that are taking it in that list. Um, that's a whole nother, you know, ballpark and different league of their own when it comes to talking about the current state of the game. Just shooting at stuff that has a lot of health or that's hard to kill in scenarios where you don't get rewarded for shooting at it until you shoot at it so many times so effectively you can kill it. So. Yeah.
Nope, and I think that's where we talk about when we, again when we talk about points. I think that's something that can be discussed, right? Like, right? Like, what if I pit the gauntlet so you can only take one gauntlet? Lower their points. You no longer can just you can no longer just beef your list out because I think that's another issue you have in like Rebel, uh, for example. Uh, Rebel's a big one that you have that issue in, right? If you just beef out, what are you gonna do? You know, I don't know. I think it's harder now for Rebels to like totally beef out because of. The rebels are just leaning more heavily into just damage, like three, like four ship lists, just with like protons and it's, you know, Colby and coordinating and, but not really that beefy anymore. I mean, whereas before you had B wing, B wing, B wing, Arc 170, A wing, right? Or something along those lines. It's like, boy. Um, but yes, the sentiment I agree with for sure. Awesome. All right. With that being said, thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week, Sunday night, 9 p.m. We're going to be covering all of the uh, all the different tournaments that are happening next weekend.